Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. And today I'm going to be making a sweet potato, like a, a fiery, spicy, kind of sweet potato relish sort of thing. I don't really know what to call it. I'm kind of going off of a recipe and I think it's called just fermented sweet potatoes, but I'm definitely going to make it my own and do it very differently. And I'm first off, I'm not actually using sweet potatoes. I'm using yams because the sweet potatoes that I have are just terrible and they're, they're, they're bruised and they're damaged and they're beaten. And I don't want to risk fermenting those because I don't think that they'll do very well. So I have some yams that are in perfectly good shape and from everything that I see here, they're basically sweet potatoes anyway, so I'm not going to worry a whole lot about that. So anyways, so what we're going to do with these is we're going to add some ginger, some onions, some jalapenos and some salt, and we are just going to ferment these things away and it's going to be delicious. So this recipe calls for two and a half pounds of fer fermented or goodness, two and a half pounds of spiralized sweet potatoes. We have more than that. I think it was three something pounds. And I, I don't have a purpose for these other than this recipe. So I'm going to use them all and we're just going to adjust accordingly. Yeah. Three pounds, two ounces. So, and anytime that you're fermenting something, you want to make sure that you're getting it organic. I mean, I could tell you that it would be fine otherwise, but I don't believe that. So I'm not going to say it. Um, so, you know, some people say that it's okay to, to ferment with non um, organic produce. Um, and I guess actually I should take that back. It, the, the fermentation process can really lessen the amount of, uh, chemicals and herbs, herbicides and things that are on it. So if, if that is all that is available to you, it's probably better to ferment it than it would be to eat it raw or to cook it. Cause it would get rid of a lot of the pesticides that are in it. So I take that back, but in ideal worlds, you definitely want to get organic, uh, uh, sweet, uh, organic ingredients to ferment. So, and then also what goes along with that is you want to make sure that you don't remove the peel because the peel in just about anything that you're fermenting with some exceptions, some things you want to remove the peel just because they're inedible. But for the most part, you want to make sure that you're leaving the, uh, the peel on it because that's where the bacteria is. And that's, what's actually going to ferment. So, all I'm doing here is just chopping it down to size and then we're going to run it through ah, my food processor using the handy dandy little spiralizer thing that I have in here. I've never actually used it and I have no idea how it works. I've used the food processor. I just haven't used the spiralizer. And I'm re really just hoping that using the fire, the food processor that I won't waste as much as I would with my normal like, I don't know what they call it, what it is, a spiralizer, zoodle maker, whatever it may be. And it always leaves that core in the middle. And I'm hoping that this won't. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay. So we got our sweet potatoes, all spiralized up. They're kind of fun. Most of them didn't actually spiralize, but some of them did, and they're pretty cool. It's like playing with a little toy. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is just to add in the other ingredients to this and kind of just let it set and mellow for a little while. So we have our ginger. And the recipe calls for a one inch nub, but I'm looking, the rest of the ingredients are not exactly very fiery. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit more than like an inch to it, but nothing, it's not a lot. Cause I have ruined ferments before with just too much ginger flavor. 
because it just it ferments so quickly and so not quickly but the flavor intensifies so much that you can ruin or ferment pretty easily by adding too much ginger i don't i mean i love ginger i got a huge spicy pot of ginger tea going on right over there but just don't go crazy with the ginger take it easy get to know it a little bit you know So after that, it calls for two, or for, it calls for one small onion, and I'm gonna use two medium onions. I should have compost one, but I don't. Right. Here's to hoping that it's not terrible. Now is the moment that she regretted deciding to use two onions. Okay, so we have this. We have the sweet potatoes in here. We have about three pounds, two ounces, I think it was, of the sweet potatoes. None didn't peel them, and then I put a little more than an inch of ginger in here and two medium-sized onions. And we're also gonna add some of the jalapenos to it, but just cause I want the jar to look kind of pretty, I'm gonna wait until we're all done because this next step, we're gonna have to massage it and we're gonna, you know, let it sit and wilt and things like that. So we're gonna do that afterwards. The recipe calls for three to four tablespoons of salt. And we added a little bit of extra of the sweet potatoes and the recipe is just a little bit bigger in general. And so I'm gonna add on the high side, it says three to four. So I think I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add five and then I'm gonna taste it. Okay, so now we're just gonna stir it up and mix it up. I am just overjoyed with stuff like this. It makes me happy. There's a bunch of them in here. Most of them didn't and they all just kind of broke apart but some of them held strong and they are awesome. These are better than any spiralized ones I've seen. And there's no waste to it, which is even better. It goes all the way down to the core. So I really like that. So I'm just making sure that this is fully mixed in and we're not gonna have any uh, clumps or parts that are not gonna get any salt. Cause we wanna make sure that as soon as the salt gets on here, it's already starting, you can see it's starting to glisten already. And it's just gonna pull a lot of the moisture out of the, um, <laughs> out of the sweet potatoes and the onions and things like that. And it's gonna help it to create its own brine. So I'm gonna taste this. Need probably one more. Basically you're aiming for it to taste like a potato chip. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this aside. I'm gonna throw a tea towel or a muslin cloth on top of it just set it aside for like a half an hour and work on something else and then just you know let the salt do what it was supposed to do and it will extract all the moisture and start creating us a brine now we're ready to take the next step with our sweet potato relish jalapeno thing so what we're gonna actually do with this is because i noticed there's no garlic in it so we're gonna we're gonna fix that There we go. And the jalapenos. Um, it calls for one jalapeno. And I kind of want to make sure that I have enough left over to do a another ferment. I'm gonna go with five. Five it is. Okay. 
If you have gloves, wear gloves. I don't, so I pay for it later on. I don't usually touch my eyes, but depending on how hot they are, it makes my hands like burn. It's weird, like the palms of my hands for like the next day, every once in a while will just burn. So I'm just gonna cut these into little dimes. The recipe says to de-seed them. I'm not going to. I like the extra heat that it gives. So it stays. So you can see in here, it's very, very pretty. Just vibrant colors. So now I'm just gonna mix it all up. Oh yeah, there's lots of brine in here. Oh, that smells so good. Okay. So now we have our flip top jar here and I'm just gonna load it in there. All right. So we're just gonna pack this in there as, as much as we can pack it in there. Like as tight as we can get it. I forgot to get my mallet, but I'm gonna grab my my uh, crop powder pounder. I think it's gonna take both of these jars. I'm glad I washed them both. Okay. Okay. So I got my crop pounder here is really just a souvenir that that I got at Goodwill, but it works. It doesn't have any kind of um, finish on it. It's just raw wood, so I like it. Okay, we're going to see if we can carefully place some jalapenos up against the edge of this thing to make it look pretty. Let's see what we can do here. I really want it to look nice. And sometimes it's okay just to take the extra step to make sure it looks beautiful. I mean, why go through all this work just to throw it in a jar? Which is what I usually do, actually. I shouldn't say that. But when you have the opportunity, you can make it pretty. Pretty-ish, anyway. I think it's pretty. What I'm gonna do is just make up a little bit of brine with at a, like a 2% ish ratio. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna mix up a pint of water with a tablespoon of salt in it. And I'm gonna mix it up until it dissolves and then I'm gonna top off both of these and seal them up. Uh, I don't anticipate I'll have any issues with, uh, I've done a lot of experimenting with these things. I know that a lot of people, including the manufacturers, say that you shouldn't use it. So you know, use your own discretion, but I haven't had any issues with it. It definitely hasn't molded and the manufacturer uh, says that basically the thing that you need to be concerned about with it is it exploding. And I haven't had that happen. And I, don't, I mean, if you're concerned about it, you can always just pop it open and just burp it every day, which probably is what I'm going to do because it is so sweet. Who knows how quickly it will ferment. So it has been almost two weeks since we left these sweet potato, jalapeno, onion, mixture since we left this thing to ferment and I've popped the lid on it a couple times and I've been checking on it and probably yesterday it started growing just a little bit of mold but I just didn't have the time to deal with it and so I just wanted to and I figured it would be a good, a good opportunity to share with you guys kind of what a ferment can look like and you know you want to make this is why you want to make sure you're checking your ferments often particularly in the beginning, but this is why you wanna make sure you're checking your ferments often so that you can catch these before it gets really bad. And that's what happened to me last time when I was doing the, uh, the sweet potatoes and it just got completely obliterated by mold because I left it in the closet and I never checked on it. Okay, so now we're gonna open it. I don't know if it's gonna pop, but... You hear that? Okay, so you can see right here, let's, right there. There's a little piece of mold there, and then there's one that's just starting right here. 
So some people might get kind of weirded out by that and some people might be like, oh my gosh, you're gonna eat mold. But I'm not gonna have much of an issue with it. It's only those top two little pieces. They're very small. If it had like seeded into the actual ferment or if it had really taken over the top of it, I probably would not actually consume it. Um, but since it's such a small amount, I caught it so early, I'm comfortable with my own personal self. I'm the only one who's gonna eat these. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel off that top and I'm not gonna worry about it. And nothing will happen. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't wanna jinx myself, but. So let's get on with this and clean this thing up, shall we? So I have my bowl, cause I knew it was moldy, so I got right myself ready for it. And so all I'm gonna do is literally just take off this top bit. That's it. I've got two spots here. And I'm, I'm gonna take off way more than I think I need to take off just to make sure that I get everything out of there. I'm gonna do an extra little scan, get anything I think might look kind of funky. Because this is um, like it's a it's sweet ferment. I would consider it a sweet ferment. So I'm really surprised that it hasn't actually the mold hasn't taken over, given how long that it's actually been fermenting. It's been fermenting for like almost two weeks. So I'm I'm really shocked that it's in this good a condition. And I think especially given that I didn't cover it and I didn't weigh it down. So I think it's just the little Fido style jars are just. If you don't have them, you should get them. I like them. Okay, so. It definitely has a strong fermented smell. I did try this probably, I wanna say five days in. And I don't remember if I filmed it or not. If I did, you already saw it. I definitely tasted it and it was pretty darn salty. So. <laughs> We'll see if the fermentation process has lessened the salt at all. I'm really nervous to try it because it was so salty. It was just, it was a salt lick. It was terrible. I'm gonna take off a little more just to make sure. That is really good. Oh my gosh. I think probably what I would do next time this is definitely done. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to put it in the fridge and we're just going to be done with it. I'm probably going to portion this into little, little jars so that I can bring it with me. But this is so good. It, um, definitely one thing that I would do with it next time is more jalapenos. It's not super spicy, a little bit less ginger and probably like making sure to microplane the ginger, like get it really, really teeny tiny small. Cause the last time I tried it, I didn't get a bite of it this time, but the last time that I actually tried this, I got some of the really stringy grainy peel parts of the ginger and I didn't really like that. So next time I'm definitely going to microplane it just to get it really small. I lost, I broke my microplane, so I need to get a new one. This is delicious. Like I could just seriously just sit here and, and, and eat it out of the jar. And just to kind of prove my point. Yeah, see the ginger is just, it's a little bit too much ginger for me. I would like to have more jalapeno, less ginger, uh, but it's not overpowering. If you really enjoy the flavor of ginger, this is gonna be spot on for you. And I, I don't have a clue how it would be if you are sensitive to heat. I have found that I have a very, in comparison to most people that I have met and dined with i have a very high tolerance for heat and so i have stopped telling people it's not that bad because i have like sent plenty of people like rushing to the fridge to find some milk unintentionally so i can't really comment on the heat level of this but for me it's mild and it needs more jalapenos but the flavor of it is still there so maybe it'll be good for you who knows but I honestly, I think this might even be delicious enough that my husband might like it. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get him to, to try this tonight if I think about it. And when I'm actually editing this, I'll put, you know, I'll put words somewhere on the screen and let you know if he actually liked it because he doesn't like any ferments, but he likes some spicy ferments and he likes um, 
He likes water kefir. He likes a few select things as long as they're not too fermented-ish. So, any user. This is the other jar, and you can see right here, there's a little bit of mold going on right here. It's just a little bit though, and then one other bit here. All this big scary looking stuff right here, that's just the calm yeast, and that is totally normal. This stuff, I usually, you know, sip, uh, scoop it off, but this stuff is 100% normal and completely harmless. It has not mold, it's not anything, it's just calm yeast. This stuff is the mold right here, but again, I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop that off. I just wanted to show you this because the, the other one didn't have any calm yeast really on top much at all, and this stuff is has a crazy ton. So if you are looking for a very unique ferment, something that is delicious, has a little bit of sweetness to it, but has some spice, ginger, all those kinds of amazing delicious flavors all married together in one recipe, this is it. So I definitely recommend that you give this one a shot and I hope you do. Let me know in the comment section below if you're planning on trying this unique ferment. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next video for our next fermenting project. And let me know down below what you guys are working on today. We'll see you next time, bye.